Well, greetings, Mr. Colazar's forensics class. We're going to look into the different ways fingerprints can actually be left or produced. So what we're going to look into is the fact that fingerprints can be looked at as patent fingerprints, plastic, or latent. And this is going to be very important here, these three, and how they actually are found. So patent prints, visible prints, transferred onto smooth surfaces by blood or other liquids so that once something is touched you can actually see the print. So there would be an example there where you can actually see the print. A plastic print are fingerprints left in indentations in soft materials such as clay or wax or some kind of soft uh, soft clay. Uh, maybe even like uh, if somebody is to touch some chocolate. Chocolate so that you're leaving an indentation in there. So both of these first, so our plastic prints are visible prints left to indentations. And our last type is our, la our latent fingerprints. Latent fingerprints are the ones that are not visible right away. And so we're gonna look into dusting with powders or the use of different chemicals to actually detect or to find the ones that you can't see that are not visible to begin with. Now, a couple frequently asked questions. Can fingerprints be erased? Uh, nope. Unfortunately, under most techniques and ways, they can't be. They generally will always grow back if some kind of chemical is to be used or if you were to try to burn your fingerprints off or, uh, the, or use chemicals in order to remove them, they'll grow back. Uh, surgically, surgically you could actually cut them off and then be reattached with different ones but somebody's going to know that that actually happened boy that looks messy and then fingerprint identification reliable yes but some people can make mistakes so far no two people have been seen to have the same ones fingerprint matching carried out with computers in a matter of seconds um, no, it does take a long time for them to actually match two fingerprints together. The Integrated Automated Fingerprint Identification System, or APHIS, um, uses, um, you know, if the master's on file versus the print that's accepted, it takes about two hours in time in order for a computer to actually match those prints up. So it does take some time still. Now, when we collect these prints, if we're going to use chemical, and this is going to be latent prints, and this is going to be different chemical fuming, where the fumes from those chemicals are actually going to stick to the prints. So nine hydrin is going to be one. Use is usually on paper, and it leaves kind of a blue purple print. Uh, can take a while for it to actually make that print appear. Cyanoacrylate. Cyanoacrylate is the fancy name that you need to know. This is super glue. Go ahead and write super glue in. Super glue, and it's going to stick and actually make a nice white print on there, the vapors from the super glue. Silver nitrate is going to give us a blackish or reddish brown color under UV light. Uh, it degrades after a little while, so if you want to, you have to photograph and take that print down right away. And then iodine fuming can be used. Uh, the vapors of a solid iodine kind of give us a brownish fingerprint which fades really quickly needs to be photographed uh, so that we can actually see that fingerprint and keep that fingerprint long time so these are all ways to chemically fume to collect fingerprints now other ways we can do are fluorescent powders UV lights can help us find fingerprints on definitely on multicolored or dark surfaces which the black fingerprint powder wouldn't work Magnetic powder is also a very nice way. It can be used to reveal prints. Uh, powders work better on shiny surfaces or like plastic bags. Cyanoacrylate, again, remember the super glue method is used to develop latent prints on a variety of objects, solid objects, uh, plastic bags, many other materials, and it makes print look similar to the one over on the side. Nine hydrin bonds to amino acids fingerprints kind of a nice purple bluish color works really good on papers and cardboard 
future fingerprinting, this isn't in your slides. Uh, digital scanning is going to be the future key part there. Identifying uh, mistakes and the smudges takes all that out. Uh, digitally, we're seeing that with cell phones already. Trace elements and objects that have been touched. Uh, you could find out uh, a little bit more information. So if there was anything on the fingerprints when they're touched, you could use that evidence to help out see what they've actually touched and been in. And to help identification other physical features like your eye print, uh, facial pattern recognition is also another pattern being studied. But our summary fingerprints have been used uh, since about the mid 1800s to recognize different persons. Arches, whirls, loops to remember law, the three types. Uh, basic analysis includes the uh, cores, deltas, and a ridge count. Uh, investigator search for patent, plastic, and latent fingerprints. And we'll either be dusting with powders or using chemicals to find those invisible prints and make those latent prints visible. Uh, developments uh, hopefully will help make uh, less errors in analysis when our fingerprints remember individual evidence.